Welcome to Raising a Money Smart Kid brought to you by the Virginia Credit Union. My name is Tom Katosic and I am here to talk to you today about tips and techniques on how to raise a child around personal finance and money management. This is a very important topic for me personally as we try to work through these uh, interesting economic times. I am a new father. I uh, recently had a, a little baby girl not too long ago uh, and we are as I learn more about, as I think more about what I do uh, as a financial educator, I think more about how I can take some of those lessons and what I've learned and what I do every day, all day, is talk to people about money and finance. And now it's going to be really in my lap to to impart this information to uh, my little girl. So we're, I'm excited to talk to you all today about some different tools and techniques and things you want to try to focus on while talking to your child about personal finance. These are some things, hopefully along the way you'll learn some things for yourself as well, because one of the most important things that you can do to help your child be proficient at money management is to model that. So we're going to talk about that kind of of as we go through here today. As you can see on the screen, there's uh, my direct contact information. Uh, you'll see this again at the very end. Feel free to contact me if you have any follow-up questions about anything we discuss here today. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what we want our kids to know. We're gonna, I'm going to jump back and forth between this PowerPoint presentation and the Virginia Credit Union website and show you some resources that we have available for teachers and how you as a parent can utilize those things in your own home and some of the core learning objectives and concepts that we like to try to present to students and kids of different age le levels, different age ranges. So before we get into kind of the technical piece and, and some of the examples of what we're going to be looking at, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we want our kids to know. Some of the broad concepts that you will see that run through all of the levels of learning that we're going to be discussing here today, which we have it broken up into elementary school age, middle school age, and high school age students. What we're going to be talking about today is the importance of saving and how paramount that is in today's society and economy, how to make a good financial decision, weighing your different options. This is where needs and wants are. This is where we talk about the concept of opportunity cost. And whenever I make a decision, that means I have to give up something else. We're also going to talk about how to be financially responsible. So this kind of has to do with, uh, along with making good financial decisions, uh, being responsible for those decisions that we do make. So this is, has to do with building credit, paying your bills on time, being a responsible person just in our society when it comes to your, your personal finances. With saving, again, I cannot stress enough the importance of saving. And as adults, we know that we should save more. We all think about saving and we all say to ourselves at the end of the month, man, where did all my money go? I wish I could have saved a little bit more. I wish I would have. We have these different thoughts of hopefully not terribly deep regret, but what we would have done better if we would have been able to look in hindsight. I work with this financial advisor who does presentations with us around investing and retirement planning. And he had a very profound comment. He said, I've never met a client that said, I wish I would have saved less or started later when it comes to saving and thinking about long-term planning. So with your kids, their most valuable asset that they have as a young person is time. It's their life. They have the ability to take lessons that they can learn now and implement them now as a young person. And by the time they get to middle school, high school, college, they can already be on a strong foundational footing for, for dealing with their money. I am a trained person in finance and banking. I've been in banking for a majority of my career. Uh, I've been working at the credit union for almost 10 years now, uh, with the last three to four of them being exclusively focused on teaching. I am not, however, a trained educator. What we are going to talk about today are a couple different ways that you will be able to teach your children how to manage their money. One of them through explicit messaging and learning and lesson plans, which is what we typically save for teachers. We're going to have that available uh, uh, for you to access. I'm going to show you how to do it and how to use some of these tools. Also, a big thing that we do, and this is kind of where financial education comes into play in our day to day lives, is role modeling. Almost every situation that you have when you interact with your kid can be there can be some sort of lesson learned and you can find a way to tie it in 
to a financial lesson at, at, at some level. What we're talking about here is, is just different concept of delayed gratification, different concepts around the, the time value of money, which you don't need to be an expert on, but you need, do need to understand and impart how this works to kids about compounding interest and taking on loans and learning how a balance sheet works and learning about cash flow. It sounds very technical and very high level, and but when you break it down, it really can be very simple. And so what we need to do and we need to, what we're going to talk to you about is some, some tools that you have available, available to you to learn for yourself and to be able to impart that uh, to your child. So as we kind of go through, we have each grade level or, or, or kind of school tier of elementary, middle, and high school broken down into explicit messaging and resources along with tips around how to role model your behavior and different learning lessons that we can come to at different points. So we're going to jump right in here with uh, elementary school. These are typically the learning objectives that we like to focus on for very young children, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. We have uh, the concept of work. This is where we start to, to talk about like bartering systems and the value of work and how their time has value. And when they do something, there is a reaction and they can either receive something of a, that's a reward or receive something that's kind of a punishment. We also like to, at this point in their uh, academic learning, recognizing coins and bills and how to utilize that to learn math, basic math skills. We start to identify what the difference is between a want and a need. And when we get to be adults, like that can be a very difficult thing because we're, we live in a society where everyone can list very easily what their, ba what people's basic needs are in terms of, in terms of their biological needs, like food, shelter, water, clothing, those kinds of things. But we also have other types of needs, like emotional needs, psychological needs, and money does play a big role in that, and especially when it comes to advertising and marketing. And of course, what we start to introduce at this con at the concept of saving at the elementary school level. So what you see here on your screen now is a list of different books that we typically recommend reading through these different age ranges and, and levels. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to flip over to our website and show you how you can actually find lesson plans that are associated with many of these different books that we typically show to and give to teachers in the classroom. Uh, we're very fortunate in Virginia that this stuff is actually taught. It's mandated to be taught in the classroom, but you as the parent are the ultimate teacher for your child. And so if you have another way to help reinforce some of the things that they're learning at school and vice versa, it's only going to strengthen your, your students' knowledge. So we're going to flip over here real quick to our website. For those of you that are members, you're probably familiar with this, and you click directly on this online banking. Right now we're going to look at a different feature here today, which hopefully will be beneficial for you all. Right here, near where you log on for your online banking, is this uh, tab here called Learn. So if you go to that, you'll see that it kind of floats down here. But if you just click on that Learn tab, or up at the top, you, as you can see here, you just type in vacu.org slash learn, and it brings you directly to this site. And what we have here are all of the educational resources that we offer through the Virginia Credit Union centralized in one location. So it's a lot of blogs, videos, learning modules, links to online financial health checkups. We've been posting more webinars recently as we've gone into this more digital mode of, of communicating in our, in our society. So we have a lot of great resources for you here, but what I'm going to highlight here today is our financial education resources specifically. So as you see here, you'll see a bunch of different things that are available to use, webinars primarily. A lot of this stuff is geared towards teens and, and adults because they're the ones who would typically use a bank website more often than, than, a, than a young person, obviously. But what I want to show you all as parents is the teacher link. So teachers have access to all of this information for free. It's all approved by the Department of Education. But again, you are their most prominent teacher. So you feel free to access this as well. So what we're going to look at here first is our elementary school SOL approved financial lesson plans. So as we saw on our PowerPoint presentation, there was a list of different books that were available that we that we recommend through the credit union. Here we have lesson plans that are associated with most or all of those books. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go through this whole thing. It's a pretty extensive list and it does break it down by grade and it does uh, over here you'll see on some of these different it, it talks about the supplies that you'll need in order to 
to present this lesson to your child and the book or books that are recommended to to present this information so a lot of this stuff does focus around saving and understanding basic economic concepts around again you'll see opportunity costs savings setting goals understanding trade-offs and what we're looking at here in terms of uh, uh, creating dollars and understanding what dollars and, and coins and cash actually look like there's a great little exercise here where you can actually design your own currency i apologize for scrolling to, through this pretty quickly but i wanted to get through some of this um, where you can actually have your kids design their own money which is a lot of fun that's a very fun exercise one of our favorite exercises that we promote and we do utilize at our teen money camps at our middle school level and at the elementary school level is this entrepreneur uh, exercise which we absolutely love doing the the one of the core backbones of the united states economy or all, all economies is is small businesses so what we have is a a lesson plan a guided plan about being an entrepreneur and it's a lot of fun to do it gets your kid really thinking about the concept of of what a business is why a business exists how a business can make money and so if you look down here there's a way that you can have your student have your child brainstorm what kind of business they would be interested in opening it's just a lot of fun you can make it into a great game what do you do what what kind of product or service do you provide a lot of great teaching opportunities uh, come out of this particular event you can talk about different pricing how much does it cost who is some of your competition it's really really a lot of fun and we do this like i said we do this with with element with fifth graders really anywhere fifth grade or above the the your students your children can really get a lot of uh knowledge and impact out of this so that's our elementary school resources we're going to pop back over here uh, a couple times a little bit later on to show you some uh, resources for middle and high school age students uh, but right now we're going to go back so these are some some explicit lesson plans and learning opportunities that you can present to your kids around personal finance and money management but what about the other side of this well, we like to really focus a lot here on uh, modeling behavior because that really is where students are able to or young people are able to learn quite a bit um, the things that you do will have a long-lasting impact on your kids especially at that young age of, of elementary school most of you all probably have a memory going back a long ways where you received your first allowance or you got your first check from grandma for your birthday or the tooth fairy visited and left you some money what are we going to do with that money those are all excellent talking points and places where you can have great financial conversations you can talk to your kids you should be talking to your children about what you do for a living what kind of work you do you don't necessarily have to get into the details obviously of like how much you get paid or what your specific bills are but you do want to start to introduce some of these concepts to them even at this young of an age I know we want to try to shelter and protect our children from the harsh realities of our daily lives but the reality is the sooner that they get exposed to this even at a conceptual level the better off they're going to be in the long run so this is also a good time to introduce the concept of of, of banking and savings accounts at credit unions uh, and banks we look at maybe opening a custodial savings account for a child at this time and if they're their grandparent or their parent you or another family member gives them money or a check like cash or a check you make it an experience to go into the bank or credit union we love seeing kids when we, they come into the branches and we have we have we try to make it a great experience for them and, and making sure that you're recording where you're saving and setting financial goals for yourself setting goals is a very important skill to learn as well we want to give our children the ability to set some sort of objective and accomplish that so at this age at the very young age we like to think about very short-term goals because typically kids have very short-term attention spans so we look at setting daily or weekly goals with some sort of incentive that that is very enticing or interesting for them now the whole study of economics revolves around incentives positive reinforcement negative reinforcement for negative behavior um, all of these types of things can be incorporated in personal finance lessons we also definitely encourage at this age having a change jar a savings jar and start to collect coins and you could talk about the different types of coins and we want kids to start using their own money for small stuff at this point go to the grocery store and give your kid a two dollar budget for something that they want and they have to select one thing or maybe they could select a bunch of different things as long as it fits within the two dollar 
uh, limit. This point though, we do need to make sure that we are reinforcing those behaviors and sticking with our parameters. If we say that this is gonna be how this works, like we're only gonna have a $2 budget, then don't allow them to have a $2.50 prize or gift or whatever it is, the purchase that they wanna make. That's how you teach a kid how to restrict their spending and that your income and your resources that you have are limited. So we wanna make sure that we're staying firm with that. Once we get to the middle school age, things get a little bit more sophisticated, but again, we're gonna stay along some of those same objectives and, and learning outcomes. So we really wanna focus on savings accounts, the, the banking system and credit unions, earning money, how middle school kids can learn money, earn money, and different spending choices, and really kind of up the concepts around opportunity costs and choice making. So I'm gonna flip back over here to our resources here from the credit union website and show you what we have available for middle school students. So if you'll see here on our landing page for teachers for middle school students, we have a lesson plan and we have a PowerPoint. Now, if you are a very ambitious parent and you do like to do homeschooling and teaching your kids, feel free to walk them through a PowerPoint. I don't know how many middle school kids are interested in having a PowerPoint presentation presented to them by their parents while they're at home. They'd rather be watching TV or I don't know, on their video games or something like that. But if you're if you're up for it, it's available for you to use, just like the teachers. But we want to click on this lesson plan. So there's a lot of really great activities embedded in this particular lesson plan for, for middle school students. And again, we want to focus on financial institutions, learning how the monetary system works on a very high level, uh, the role of money in our society, uh, why money is important to know how to utilize and how to use. So there's a lot of great content in here, some different activities. One activity that I would like to highlight is one that we use quite a bit at the credit union, which is called our M&M game. We call it our M&M game, but we also title it the life budget game, where you take a handful of M&Ms, one of those fun size packets works really well. And as you can see up here, we assign it a different action based on a financial decision. So receiving allowance would be classified as an income. You take the number of greens you have, you multiply it by five, and then you start to track it down here. So this is a very basic cash flow analysis. So we have different incomes, we have different amounts of incomes, we have different spending, we have different amounts of spending, and then down at the bottom, we do some very basic math where we total up our income, we total up our expenses, and we come out with a final amount or final outcome, which is basically a cash flow. So things that we want to try to highlight is what is an income, what is an expense, what does it mean, money coming in, money going out, where do we have choice? Now, when we're doing the M&M game, one of the things that I always like to highlight is the fact that the M&Ms are predetermined or preset in your packet or the amount or what, we're, what you're given, so you don't have any choice. It's just about counting it up. But in real life, you do get to choose how much, uh, how you do your do your chores to receive your allowance. Like if you choose to do your your chores and receive your allowance, or if you don't, um, you also want to focus on a great learning lesson in this particular exercise is around saving. So saving, we have up here as an action item that you wanna classify as income or expense. This is a very excellent time to talk to a student about how we always wanna classify savings as an expense because you're paying yourself, just like you're paying a bill, just like you're paying for your rent or your utilities, you have to make sure that you're putting money into your savings because if you don't, by the end of the month, whatever's left over usually is spent on other stuff. So we always wanna to try to make sure that we're prioritizing savings and classifying it as an expense. But this is a really, really excellent lesson plan and a, and a game to do and who doesn't like having M&Ms? We also get into, at this point at the middle school level, talking about careers and jobs on a little bit of a higher level. By the time they reach middle school, they maybe you have started to give them an allowance and they are starting to think about different ways that they can make money and they wanna think about why they wanna make money in order to buy a certain video game or a t-shirt or these new shoes or whatever it is that they're interested in buying, that their friends are buying. This is also where you start to see a lot of external things influence your kids. So you wanna be sure that you're having those conversations regularly about what they're hearing about money, what they're hearing about personal finance, because there's a lot of things that float around in, in, our, in the lexicon of, of what is known about personal finance that can be very off-putting and lead kids down a very bad path 
uh, financially if they're getting bad information. So once you start to look through this, we also have a bunch of sample budgets for different careers and we talk about education, things like that. Feel free to use this as much as you want. It's a really, really awesome lesson plan. And we actually incorporate quite a bit of that into some of our, our high school lesson plans as well. So along with some explicit lessons and, and activities that you can do to highlight some of these different things, we also do like to talk more about hands-on action and modeling at this age as well. So at the middle school level, again, there are different ways that, that kids can be making money by doing specific chores, by doing extra chores. There's a lot of different philosophies out there around chores and allowance, and some people, some people are adamant that uh, uh, because a, a young person lives at their house, then that, that should require them to do chores. It's just part of being part of the family, which is a perfectly reasonable expectation. So maybe doing things that are above and beyond normal upkeep, like keeping your room tidy or taking the care of the dog or things like that. Maybe it's doing extra yard work or cleaning something, doing cleaning out the car or doing something a little bit more specific that requires more effort can demand a little bit of a financial compensation. The key to this, though, when you're doing this with your, your young adult, your young person, is that you want to make sure that you're following through on the arrangement or agreement that you have decided upon. And that's both positively and negatively. If the student or your, if your child ends up not performing their duties as assigned or doing their chores as, as agreed upon, then you do need to make sure that, that that punitive action of not receiving their allowance does actually happen. Uh, this is also a great time to, to work with your kids on structuring, incentivizing, and really focusing on midterm and, and longer term goals. So where they're young, we think about daily goals and weekly goals. When they get a little bit older, maybe we can think about weekly goals or monthly goals. Like if you save up this amount of money by the end of the month, a really, really great strategy around this is doing the you save half and I'll pay for half strategy around a specific toy or item that the, the your, your child has been eyeballing. Um, you want them to learn to use their own money and start to make choices because that's the reality of how life works. If I choose to buy this candy, then I will not be able to buy the skateboard in a handful of months. So there are life lessons and learn financial lessons embedded in almost everything that you do. So once we start to get to the high school level, we really start to expand on a lot of these things and get into a little bit more detail. Again, from a high school perspective, the actual student in school, they get this through uh, personal finance and economic standard of learning. If you're a Virginia resident and your students in school in a, a, a public school and most private schools in the state of Virginia. So things that we focus on through the high school level standard of learning is careers, basic living expenses and budgeting. We also look at uh, how to use online banks and checking accounts, transportation, uh, saving and investing long-term. So I'm gonna quickly show you some resources that we have available here. And uh, through our Smart Start curriculum, which is a full SOL approved curriculum, and then we'll get to wrapping up pretty quickly. So here we have our Smart Start curriculum for teachers. This is a full SOL approved curriculum that's available to use. Each of these different lesson plans has a short video, uh, which is great. You can teach your kid a little bit about credit. You can teach your kid about uh, saving and investing and all kinds of different stuff. Much like those last couple lesson plans, it is designed for a teacher. So if you don't quite understand how to how to work it, it's really not terribly difficult to 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 navigate. Everything's kind of laid out in a in a fairly straightforward way. It's an excellent resource to go through with your kids. But really what we're going to start to learn about more at this level is around personal action and modeling. So here we have what students really should be learning about are setting larger goals, how to incentivize those goals. Students are going to start, to, kids are going to start to at this age learn about getting their first job, understanding what taxes are, this is the time where you want to think about opening up a joint account with your child so they can actually have a debit card and having a joint account allows you to monitor activity with them. It's not a bad idea at this point to also have money meetings uh, once a month. This is a great way to have those frank conversations with students. Considering opening up a joint account to help teach your children about credit and how to build credit. And then you need to also make sure that you're practicing 
responsible borrowing and bill paying activities. So this is where you would want to think about maybe loaning your child some money to buy something that they may be interested in and then having them pay you back over time like it was a loan that they were responsible for to help them build credit. One of the best learning experiences financially that most kids are going to go through is about around their first car. So there's a tons of different lessons that you can impart real hands-on that have real tangible results around owning and buying their first car. Setting a goal, fixed expenses such as a loan payment or insurance payment, variable expenses such as gas, routine maintenance, unexpected expenses such as blowing a tire and other mechanical mishaps and things like that. You also can introduce them to the concept of insurance and how insurance works. There's a total cost analysis that you could do around how an asset depreciates over time, what is the total cost of owning a car, not just the loan payment and the gas, but how much it costs overall to own a car, which is a very eye-opening activity for adults, let alone children. And then you can also talk to them a little bit about social and economic value beyond just owning a car, because we know that a car does depreciate in value over time, we as adults know that. But we also do know that it does add economic and social value because it allows you to have a sense of freedom and it does contribute to your income by being, a, being able to get you to work quickly and reliably. So to wrap things up a little bit, some best practices when you're looking at trying to incorporate these different lessons and just some basic rules of thumb around being responsible yourself and imparting that to your children, you want to make sure that you're honest with your kids about money situations, about your money, about their money. The real world does have real consequences. So while they're under your tutelage, while they're under your kind of umbrella of, of care, you want to start to expose them to real consequences without it hurting too much. That's why, I, again, I want to stress if you say that you're going to do something, do it. If you say that that there's going to be a negative consequence uh, if they perform a certain action or don't perform a certain action like their chores, you have to make sure that you're following through with that. Use everyday situations to provide learning opportunities. Every trip to the mall, every trip to the grocery store, all the online games and things like that, all allow for you to have good conversations with your kid about financial components of decision making. Always know that your kids are observing and watching what you do, so you making sure that you're responsible for your finances is critically important, which we'll talk about that again in a second. You wanna make sure that you are educating yourself to be the master of your own finances. This includes learning how to save, learning how to invest, learning how cash flow works, learning how to build your net worth, these are important skills for everyone to learn, and the more you can learn yourself, the more you can help educate your, your child. Um, some other things you want to consider when you're when you're dealing with your child is you want to make sure that you're a safety net, but you're not enabling over-dependence. This is something that was imparted to me when I was really young. I grew up in a middle-income family in the 90s when things were not as, econ there wasn't as much economic turmoil as there has been since the Great Recession and now this coronavirus attack on our on our economy. You want to make sure that, and this is something that that I've always been been assured of, is that my parents are always there to help me out if I need it, but I am responsible for being on my own and learning how to do things on my own. Another point kind of around that same concept is you want to make sure that you're taking care of your financial financial situation first. It's your responsibility to make sure that you are in a good financial situation. The only way that you can help out anybody else is if you know that you are well taken care of for yourself. The best analogy for that is, is flying on an airplane. You want to make sure that when those oxygen masks drop down, you want to put your mask on first before you help somebody else out. This is exact same practice when you go into thinking about your money or personal finances. And this even includes helping out your children. Um, you, family is the most important thing for most of us in our society and our, our human race, and, and but you want to make sure that you won't be able to help anybody else out if you are constantly needing help yourself. So get your financial house in order in order to be able to impart that onto your child. Remember that they have youth and opportunity ahead. You don't. You have knowledge and wisdom. They have youth and opportunity. If you can give them knowledge and wisdom while they have youth and opportunity, that's only going to set them up for a financial success in the future. And 
you need to make sure again kind of tying back to making sure that your financial situation is secured first sometimes it is more important for you to prioritize your retirement planning over their education planning uh, because they have time and they have the capacity or ability to borrow and pay that off in the long run um, and and finally you definitely do want to encourage young people to take risks and to chase their dreams but you do need to make sure that you understand uh, uh, that they understand the likelihood of different uh, potential outcomes so a lot of young people want to be professional athletes they want to be professional performers or YouTube influencers or you know whatever it is the Kardashians are they want to do these things but the reality of the situation is you have a higher likelihood of being successful financially in the future if you're just good at math or if you understand how spreadsheets and data work or if you're even somewhat relatively understanding of accounting principles you will be able to find productive work in the future knowing those kinds of things but again you want to make sure that 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 your students are are passionate about what they do and they like what they do for a career and they're constantly learning and investing in themselves i hope what we went over today was was helpful on the screen here you'll see a, a link to vacu.org learn that's our hub for all of our financial education tools please feel free to utilize those things for yourself again we will be coming out with more webinar content and videos uh, in the future for you and hopefully for your kids and teens. My information is on here. Please feel free to contact me at any time, thomas.katosic at vacu.org. We also have a group email that you can reach at financialeducation at vacu.org. We'd be happy to come out once we're able to be out in public again and talk to your groups, talk to your teens, set up different uh, events and activities in the community. And we're here to help and we hope that we can and just we want to let you know that we got you and we want to thank you for being members. Thanks and have a great day.